Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, today, we're unpacking Duchess Difficult's latest attempt to stir the controversy cauldron, a seemingly innocuous little hike attended by her sketchy BF at Marcus Anderson. Now for the uninitiated, Marcus is this mysterious figure who's been in Meghan's orbit for years, dating back to her Toronto TV actress days. He's the global membership director for that elite Soho house, social club chain beloved by the entertainment elite crowd. So naturally, his sustained involvement with our disgraced duchess has sparked infinite speculation and conspiracy theories galore online. Does he just enjoy her sparkling personality so much that he can't quit her? Or could there potentially be other reasons their bond remains so ride or die tight even now, perhaps of a more transactional nature, if you catch my scandalous drift? I'll let you royal truth sleuths connect those shady dots yourselves as we examine the latest piece of circumstantial evidence. So here's the 4 to 1 one. Just days after baby Archie's birthday, Megan was papped on a casual little nature hike around her Montichicho mansion with two buddies. Marcus Anderson and some chick named Heather. On the surface, just three old friends stretching their legs and getting a dose of wellness against the idyllic Cali backdrop, right? But to the more cynical crown observers out there, the presence of Megan's shadowy Toronto pal Marcus sets off all kinds of red flag alarms. Why is this rondo socialite? Adjacent Ho was apparently instrumental in integrating Megan into the woke elite cliques, still kicking it with her post megxit is he just a loyal friend who understands and empathizes with Megan's persecution complex? Or is there potentially a more mutually beneficial element to their relationship that predated Harry and continues to this day? I'm sure the rumor mill is already working itself into a dizzying spiral of potential theories. Because let's be real, we all know the Duchess loves to keep certain convenient associates around to understand the assignment. Having a male bestie with high-powered society connections to grease those social wheels definitely tracks for the infamously status-obsessed Megan. And Marcus, by all accounts, seems to slot firmly into that yes, duchess. Archetype. Dude has been growing down with her for over a decade from Toronto to London to Montecito. Even when royal protocol dictated putting some boundaries up between them, he never strayed far from that platinum level of access. Just a gal and her most dutiful life pal, or something much more scandalous. To hear Prince Petulant tell it in his sad little truth bomb memoir, Megan was actually storing her luggage with Marcus back in the day at that fancy Soho house before the first cup of tea was even sipped with Harry. And anyone who sampled their bottled air and seen the joiner fees knows that place doesn't just let any rondo crash there. Some see ominous clues in those long-term storage habits, perhaps pointing to a potential sugar-dating situation being facilitated and bankrolled by the boys at Soho House. I'll leave that racy suggestion floating out in the ether for you all to gulp down or spit out as you please. Personally, I just find it awfully coincidental that this same Marcus Anderson is still kicking it weekly with Megan years later now. Even with a full family reputations at stake, he remains a true bestie forever. That's some industrial strength friendship bonds right there that'd make any rational people scratch their balding heads. So when framed through that unshakable context, any activity caught on camera between Megan and Marcus, even something as banal as a casual group hike, suddenly becomes this tantalizing little mystery box of potential secrets and scandal for the internet to spend weeks disassembling and theorizing wildly over. Was this just a chill hang for the Duchess and her ride or dies to breathe in some fresh SoCal air? Or was there more subtle shading and covered body language signaling a deeper, shadier relationship underpinning their dynamic? I'll let you all gossip detectives hash out those sordid possibilities yourselves. All I know is, Megan and her elite enablers sure do love creating these, is it, or isn't it? Mysteries that feed her narcissistic supply of endless attention. She's a magnet for swirling controversies, especially ones that tease out imaginations of royal impropriety and shady private lives. It's practically an art form at this point. Will we ever truly know what the real extent of Marcus Anderson's role in Meghan's duplicitous life actually is? How many layers run deeper beneath this dude's mere surface-level job description and claims of casual old friendship? 
While those juicy questions remain open for frenzied internet speculation, one harsh reality can't be ignored. Macon seems constitutionally incapable of not surrounding herself with dubious characters feeding an air of permanent scandal. Put more simply, girl can't stop stepping in it, no matter how hard she insists on pushing that charitable humanitarian rebrand. The stench of impropriety just follows her and her sketchy inner circle like sewage vapor trails everywhere they go. Whether harboring secret birth surrogate conspiracies, trafficking in shady royal trauma repressed memory therapy programs, or now hiking with allegedly self-dealing BFFs, Megan's personal brand is just irreparably marinating in sleaze and side-eye intrigue at all times. You'd think Harry would have become better at spotting these walking red flags by now, but he sure does love being strung along by mysterious social climbers and emotional bombshells with wisps of lavish pasts potentially full of covered shiver dealings, don't he? As with so many Markle fiascos, we'll likely never get full resolution on who or what Marcus's real role and involvement entails. His shadow will continue to loom large over Meghan's every cringeworthy public move forward, a looming symbol of all her elite striver origins and thirsty insecurities. We can speculate on it, meme it into the stratosphere, dig up every last shred of circumstantial Toronto tea on their early courting days, but that missing puzzle piece illuminating their mutually beneficial, special friendship will likely always remain obscured in the royal rumor fog machine. All we're left with for sure is more reasons to doubt the incredibly dodgy Duchess's rebrand into a serious public figure with pure intentions. Sorry Meg, letting professionally shady types like Marcus Anderson remain glued to your hip at all times, even on wellness walk photo ops undercuts the halo your PR team is so desperately trying to manifest. When it comes to the royals, even the hint of impropriety or private side hustle can be ruinous to one's public character. So stop flaunting your dubious interage and maybe focus on removing even the possibility of scandal from your life finally. But then again, I guess that would deprive the thirsty duchess of her main fuel source, the endless rubbernecking and public fascination her compulsive controversy courting behavior produces. Maybe the real rub here is that Megan simply can't quit being Megan, chaos agent supreme, no matter which fresh start she embarks upon. So keep those binoculars trained on the markled man in the affluence van, folks. Your prudish Aunt Megs has given us another rich vein of speculative intrigue to mine for the foreseeable future, and based on the Duchess' steadfast public neediness and sus personal associations, I guarantee you that vein will never be fully tapped out. So, what do you guys think about this news, guys? Sounds off in the comment and let me know what you think. Stay tuned for more updates on the intriguing world of royalty. Until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.